Hi, um, hopefully everybody can see my slides and um, I'm just going to refine my PowerPoint. So this is um, my description of what we did to move LifeSide 391 into uh, the virtual classroom. So in a normal term, we have one three hour weekly session. We have nine experimental weeks in four different areas of physiology and pharmacology. We have weeks for presentations and group discussions. And when we know that the students would need support, we had plenty of office hours available. And I had great teaching assistants and teaching laboratory technicians to help me. The course itself is focused on the scientific method. We look at experimental design and thinking about how you construct experiments with controls. Uh, we look at ethics with both working with human research participants and animal tissues and explain the oversight boards and why this is important and how we think about um, using these um, using these in an appropriate way. We explore the idea of sample size and understanding how the variability is going to affect how big you need to have sample sizes be, as well as the costs and the ethical costs of the sizes that you're using with humans as well as animals. We look at data analysis and how you're going to extract your raw data to get your numbers as well as do curve fitting. And then we also apply statistics to that data that's collected in the lab using t-tests and one and two-way ANOVA and then finally, we look at graphing and how you can um, use that data to generate curves. We have a research process that we use in the lab, and we have the students work, work through it a couple times, once doing a group design challenge uh, using cognitive function testing, and then cardiorespiratory physiology, where the students actually run their own pilot studies and work their way through a research question, designing experiment, experimental proposals that then get approved by me for their human uh, participants. They actually conduct those pilot studies, analyze the data, and then present it to the class as a group, and then we discuss. We also look at scientific communications with written reports in the style of journal articles or things that you'd be doing for scholarship or grant applications, oral presentations that are in the same 10 minute format that students would be doing for thesis defenses or conference presentations. And then finally posters that are in that hallmark of that conference poster presentation style format. So the question is, how do we then achieve these goals that we would be doing live in a three hour session remotely? So we switched to a remote structure. Um, I made sure for my online course experience to make sure I have a weekly announcement that reminds them of everything that they need to do and when they need to do it for that week and reminders to the course timeline and links to the different parts of OnQ. We had 90 minute sessions that were weekly, which would start out with me explaining the concepts and the assessments that they needed to do. And then we'd actually have the lab groups then break out into their individual um, groups themselves. They could work um, and collaborate with each other. And then uh, the teaching assistants and myself would go through and um, answer their questions and make sure they were on track. Um, or if it was when they would be doing the presentations, we'd actually watch their recorded um, presentation sessions and look at their posters. I made sure that we had office hours that were at least once weekly. And when we knew that there were those choke points and they need lots of help, that we um, had plenty of time for them to do things. And then we had uh, them do their rest of their work asynchronously, individually, or with their groups. And I made sure that we had access to a module that's called Remote Working in Groups, and that helps them um, figure out expectations and um, ways to solve problems if they have a problematic work uh, group member. So the initial survey on group work and habits um, really helped set the tone for the course. So in week one, um, I asked them for their grade expectations. Not surprisingly, um, almost all of the students said that they uh, wanted to work to get an A or an A+, plus, uh, which is common in the third year life side program. Um, we asked about locations and time zones to find out if anybody was really out of whack from Eastern time and also quizzed them on when they would like live sessions to be, which helped me figure out when we were going to offer our office hours. And then um, normally we just let on cue um, randomly assign people to groups. We asked them if they wanted to form groups with people that they might be living with or close to and used to working with. 
We only paired up individuals if they both requested each other. And we had an opt-out option. So you could request to not be paired with somebody. Um, and uh, even though it wasn't asked, um, I had several students comment that they really appreciated that we did this um, because it made them feel like they had some agency in what they were doing, um, which was a surpri pleasant surprise. Um, so our first section is cognitive neuroscience, and um, we actually have the students be research participants, and normally they have randomly uh, assigned a drink to consume. This time they actually self-administered their own coffee for their caffeine to see how that affect the reaction times. Um, we switched our ethics from paper forms to Qualtrics to um, be able to get consent. And they were able to assess their own cognitive function with a free app called PsychLab 101, and then um, analyze the data using GraphPad Prism, which we get free academic term licenses. And then they were able to produce a group lab report as well as um, conduct some pilot studies. And and we were able to remotely collect data and produce something new and um, start thinking about the data. So we can, this is an example of um, a statistics assignment they did. And they looked at how presenting the data can change how you can interpret it. So this is the same data set. Um, they look at uh, the regular bar graph, which everybody is normally used to seeing, um, a box and whiskers plot, which shows the median, the first and third quartiles, and then the maximum and minimum. And then um, looking at the individual scatter plot, um, which actually generated something that I hadn't seen before, which is that auditory reaction times should be shorter than visual reaction times. So we have this group that's skewed to the top. And although we didn't ask the question, um, the students and I agree that there's probably a possibility that Bluetooth headsets might have been causing a time delay, um, which winds up with that really interesting data skew, which you don't see um, if you're just looking at it in a bar graph. So um, that worked really well, but we had to have a way to actually transfer what happens in the regular lab. And this is a video from when uh, the teaching lab text, the um, TAs and myself collected data um, using lab chart and power lab, which we normally use in a given term, and be able to get the students to understand what they're looking at with the data. So we actually did a clean data collection and had uh, Sarah Ferguson um, from uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences um, come and take videos for us. So we were able to actually record the data and then share uh, the images and the data so that the students had a better sense of what was happening. And this we were then able to import into LT, which is another software platform offered by AD Instruments. And that allows us to incorporate images and videos and the actual data tracings. And it allows the students to work through pages at home on their own computer to collect and analyze the data. And this actually worked really surprisingly well. Um, and we were able to work with the students online in our Zoom sessions to make sure they were on the same page. So we were able to do our tissue labs this way, looking at both um, aorta data, as well as this ileum data that we're looking at here, as well as looking at human um, respiratory physiology data. So again, they were able to see what they would have been able to do in the lab and then analyze real um, tracings that were collected from um, participants. So um, this all, all allowed us to accomplish what our major learning outcomes were for the um, different parts of the course. And we were able to still able to walk them through that research process that they would have been doing live. So um, our experimental design challenge, we gave them a larger window rather than a single um, two hour session to do it. But um, instead they were able to look at cognitive function changes with some little questions and design experiments like does what the left eye have a better reaction time than the right eye or do you have better reaction times with different cognitive tests if you're in a quiet place or a noisy place. So they were able to do these studies and then um, they were able to analyze the pre-recorded data for their pilot study and then just propose how they would have run the pilot study itself rather than being able to do it. Um, to replicate some of those in-class interactions, we used feedback fruits and uh, they were able to look at the recorded presentations and the posters. And they actually really did a nice job on this because they gave some really thoughtful and insightful comments to each other. And even though they weren't worth very much, um, the quality of the remarks I was really impressed by. And then we also used feedback fruits so that they could give some 
um, peer review feedback to their group members, um, which for the most part worked well, although some groups that were um, quite close with each other were a little bit more hesitant to give each other um, authentic feedback because they knew that it, their friend would you know, find out that they were unhappy. So um, conclusions and lessons learned. Um, a lot of the comments that I was getting um, in our live sessions, as well as um, from overall student feedback, is the students really did want to feel connected with each other and the class. And um, several of the learners said that this was the only class that they were really feeling like they talked to each other and they felt connected with their instructor and their teaching assistants. Um, making sure we had regular communication certainly helped. Um, and you could actually see everybody logging on after I sent out an announcement and checking what they needed to do. Um, those breakout rooms and Zoom really did allow the students to work well together. Um, we also had Microsoft Teams um, working and some groups actually use Teams quite a bit too remotely. Um, I think the most positive feedback I got and actually showed up in my uh, QSET evaluations was that they enjoyed um, Cubic Cat and Daisy Dog um, popping by frequently. Um, but we still had students that were not engaging. And I think part of that was the COVID environment. Um, normally this class has a really high average and um, we've only previously had one student that's actually failed the course since I've been um, teaching it. And we did have some much lower grades, um, especially some of the independent projects. We had several students not do that. Um, it was still only about 10%, but that's far more than we normally have. Um, and definitely the labs are still much more fun in person, but it did seem to work out. Um, we did have some really nice feedback from some of the students, and um, they appreciated the amount of work that everybody pulled together to um, go in and try to make it interactive. Um, they were still getting that research skill experience out of it and um, did appreciate that, although we had a lot of different formats going on there, that LT was beneficial to their understanding. And um, they really did appreciate that they were able to formulate scientific designs and create formal presentations and work with each other in groups. Um, so I'd just like to take a moment to thank everybody that helped make this course run in the last year, the teaching lab techs, Emily, Shannon, Rachel, Charlotte, and their supervisors, Logan Bale and Yatsi, my three teaching assistants who were fantastic, Robbie, Rhiannon, and Heidi, and the previous course instructors whose um, work I um, gleefully reinterpreted into this online format. So thank you.